believe it or not, I just might be wrong about what I think voluntarism is. And I wanted to chat about that a little bit today. I'd like to start by saying that, you know, I don't know who really gets to define words. Uh, and there's a, there's a fallacy, a logical fallacy that's called the dictionary fallacy. And that is because somebody wrote something sometime in something they called a dictionary, it's therefore the, the holy truth. Well, no, there are a lot of different definitions for a lot of different things. And so uh, who owns the word voluntarism? Uh, if somebody wants to use that word to mean goat cheese, <laughs> what do I do? I'm not going to go initiate violence against that person. There's a commonly accepted uh, concept, I guess, of, of what voluntarism is, but what is it and what should it be? And so I'm doing this video because I'm wondering if I've been wrong over the years. And I'll tell you why. So voluntarism kind of started out you know, a little over 100 years ago. And uh, it was Auburn, I, bl I believe his name, let me look here, uh, Herbert. Uh, yeah, Auburn, uh, Auburn Herbert. Uh, in you know, late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, a philosopher, and he kind of coined the term voluntarism and, and used it to uh, the voluntarist creed, I think, and uh, did some other writing on it. And so he was kind of the, the original user of the term. And essentially what he meant was that all human actions, uh, interactions ought to be voluntary in nature. Now, I don't know that he always followed through with absolute intellectual consistency with these ideas, but that's what he meant by voluntarism. And so, yeah, when you make up a word, you kind of get to be the person to, to decide what it means, maybe. Um, so he, he's the guy who started it, and then it kind of lay around for a little while. And then in the last half, the last quarter uh, of the uh, 21st century, uh, Carl Watner and, and George uh, and Wendy McElroy and, and those folks, they, they kind of got together, they were all buddies and, and they talked about it and they kind of revived it. And Carl started up the newsletter, The Voluntarist, and I believe it was 1982. And it ran all the way through about a year ago, he died. And he kept it going the whole time. And a lot of a lot of help, a lot of contributors, but he was the editor of that publication for a long, long time. Uh, and so his perspective and what's still on the website, and by the way, to, to be forthright here, I he, he was a mentor of mine and he assigned uh, a friend of mine, David uh, Scotesi, and me to be his, so the executors of his estate, or, or uh, not the executors, but, but to carry on the, the voluntarist and to, to keep, it, keep it going forevermore, um, or as long as we're around to do it, and so on. So I am somewhat involved with him. And I think that bias, my love for the man, might have made me uh, stretch what voluntarism really is. Carl, and I, I think Wendy and George as well, thought of voluntarism as being a type of libertarianism in which a person did not believe that government was acceptable, it was not a good way for people to do things, and that political activity was not a good idea. And if you look on the voluntarist.com, look at the, the statement of purpose and the principles and all these things, and, and you'll see they were very clear that if you involve yourself with government stuff at all, you're legitimizing it, it happening. And so because of this, for many years, I have thought of voluntarism as a kind of a subset of anarcho-capitalism. So an anarcho-capitalist could run to be a, a, a government official, a, a politician, uh, they could do that, that would be fine. A voluntarist would say, no, I'm not going to involve myself in the political system. So that was kind of the distinction between anarcho-capitalist and voluntarist. And I'm now having to rethink that. Uh, I had a conversation the other day. I was actually had a great dinner and we hung out on the balcony and talked for hours. It was wonderful. Hanging out with uh, Keith. And Keith Knight has, of course, Don't Tread on Anyone, the, the podcast. If you're not familiar with that, uh, check it out. It's a, a video channel on Odyssey. I think he's also still on YouTube, but uh, it's a great thing. Check it out. But we were having this debate, argument, fun conversation, and we were talking about whether or not a voluntarist uh, can be involved in politics. And, and kind of my position was, as soon as you get involved in any way, 
now you're no longer officially a voluntarist. You're out of the club. But then he argued with that. And I've been thinking about it since. And if I use the strict definition of voluntarist as a person who believes everything should be voluntary, um, that doesn't really say that you can't run for political office. Um, that doesn't say that. You could still choose that as a strategy, couldn't you? So then I've been thinking about that more. And my argument to that, I still haven't come to a conclusion here. I hope you'll write comments and help me come to a conclusion. But my argument to that is voting for someone else to control others and voting does legitimize the process. So that's not a good thing, but, but voluntarism isn't about only doing good things. It's about only being voluntary. So is it or is it not a bad, does it make you not be a voluntarist if you participate in electoral politics, if you vote for someone, if you run for office, does that automatically exclude you? And the argument that it excludes you is that you are pushing for non-voluntary interaction, which is what government is. Money is stolen from people. People are bossed around who haven't agreed to be bossed around. So you are a proponent of this bad thing. I think we all agree is bad, government and, and some people being masters over others. How do you fall on this? What should, I, what should I be thinking? What am I missing? What other, I've mentioned several things here. What other things am I not thinking of that I should be adding? And I'll toss out one more thing before we close. And, and I have the note here. Um, where is the line between my involvement in government and my acceptance of government? If I need to get from here to the store and I drive on a government road that the government uh, stole money, paid private contractors to build so it had government involvement. If I drive on that, am I legitimizing the government? Or does it take something much more overt like running for office or voting? And I don't know the correct answer to that. I don't know if there is an exact line, uh, a black and white line there, or if it's a great thing. I would love your feedback. I'd love your guidance as I continue to contemplate this. Thank you. And, uh, Subscribing means a ton to me. If you do that and then maybe even hit the little notification bell, that would be awesome. Uh, thank you again for investing your time in uh, thinking about this kind of stuff.